body. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind. This is a normal response. Are you ready for our sports worldwide? 20 years, people must go to school. Children must go to work. Malema and his party can protest. There's no problem about it. Marawa Sports Worldwide. A single team dominating the Bafana Bafana squad. But honestly, I don't like it. Mm. To have so much players from the same club. Because that means that when you're looking for players in a certain position, that, they don't, that you don't find them in other teams. And this is not good for African football. Changing and re-engineering sports on the continent and the world. I'm now calling on the Congress to give a round of applause to elect Gianni Infantino as a FIFA president for the period from 2023 to 2027. All those who um, who love me, then they know there are so many. And those who hate me, I know there are few. I love you all, of course, today especially. <laughs> Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Oh, it does not get better and bigger and more legendary than a Matthew Booth in studio. And I can see a lot of people deciding to log on nice and early on the YouTube channel. Yeah, you can watch, you can listen, you can comment forward slash 947 Joburg you know wonderful space where across the country the continent as well as the world you've got front row seat now when I talk about that at Vuma FM Rise FM as well as Soweto and Live people already logged on switched on couldn't wait for the big moment uh, to chat to the big man and we're certainly looking forward to it do send us your WhatsApp voice notes you can engage we are live, interactive, 11 And the beautiful thing is that zero censorship. I look forward to telling you about what happened on this day in history, back on the 17th of March, 1991. You can hazard a guess. That's a simple one. Possibly. Probably. Who knows? Looking forward to a great weekend. I don't know where the sporting world is going to be taking you and in which sporting direction, but you can, as always, kindly share that. We'll play that out to you on the WhatsApp voice notes, 0607080484, 0607080484. So I guess when you're dealing with legends and legendary individuals like the one who's our guest here today, it also becomes a little bit difficult to know where exactly to start because he's got such an illustrious career. He's done so much in the world. So, so much. It actually takes me back to a previous conversation when this gentleman popped onto the line. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Stanton Stiga Fredericks is here. Just when people are, are informed about the non-renewal of contracts also becomes an issue. Um, a colleague of mine described this once when he was also in, in a battle. Is is Matthew Booth. He says, they treat me like I'm one of their burgers yeah. in their franchise. Describe they, that. They treat me like, a, like I'm a burger. Because the owners then had a chain of steers and this mm. and that. Uh, you have rights as a player. Yeah. If, you, if you're running out of contract, six months before that, you are allowed to seek employment. Mm. You know? But you also, on the other side, cannot go against the rules. And, and this is... So you form yeah. the, the whole way you act, that you're now opening negotiations somewhere else. So in a contract, they will give you a date. Yeah. A date as to when we will contact you if we are going to renew or not. There are sports worldwide. Monday to Friday weekdays. One thing I can guarantee you, Matthew Booth is going to be treated like a burger or any form of fast food here in the studio. But one, you know what, a fearless human being in terms of tackling, exceptional with aerial clearances as well as scoring throughout his entire time here in Mzansi. Also the time that he spent in England as well as Russia. I mean, he kicked off his incredible career as this ginger-haired skinny player back in 1994. 
when he joined Cape Town Spurs. Yeah, we got the pictures to show that, if he wants to deny it now. An 18-year career, which saw him turning out for Spurs. Then he went on to bigger and better things with Mamelodi Sundowns, FC Rostov in Russia. Went to Grela, Sovetov, Samara, and also Ajax Cape Town. Absolute aplomb. Now, many would have been forgiven for thinking that the fans were booing him rather than singing his praises every time he got the ball. And it was booth. Remember 2010. The commentators were worried. They were like, why are they booing him? Is it because he's just a single white guy in the, in the team? Why are they booing him? They didn't know. South Africans were showing him love. Matthew Booth, one of a few. But the former Bafana Bafana defender was no boo baby. I can tell you, other players that were booed in South Africa. Augustine Makalakalani was booed, probably for wearing white boots. The late Fulma Singh was booed by his own fans, for whatever reason. But not this man. He might have a couple of O's in his surname. The legend is here. Matthew Booth, good to see you. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for the invite, Rob. Good to see you again. It's been, hey? been too long. No one's booed you before. Come on. <laughs> hey? Well, even if they did, I wouldn't really know. <laughs> it was that was the beauty of it. So it's like you have a have a poor game. They do really boo you. And it doesn't really matter. Was that strange for you, though, when all the international media were so obsessed about what they thought potentially was happening in the grandstand in our grandest scheme of hosting a World Cup? Yeah, if you remember 2009, the Confederations Cup, yeah. um, the world's footballing media um, descended on South Africa for the first time, really. Um, and they were fascinated by this phenomenon. Um, of course, the local fans, the local experts all knew the reason why yeah. <laughs> the fans were booings, but it took a lot of uh, explaining to do. Um, I think uh, there were a couple of negative articles uh, from a couple of uh, Spanish and Italian uh, pressos who kind of uh, jumped the gun and reported back that uh, the only white guy in the team was getting booed. And that it was a racial thing, yeah. But uh, yeah, far from the truth. And um, so I had to put it right. And uh, they kind of, it felt a little bit uncomfortable as well, to be honest, Rob. Um, you know, I understand our history. I understood why it was happening. Yeah. But it was a little bit of a pity to be singled out just because of my color, um, when we all know how uh, diverse our footballing history uh, currently and. You know, in the past. Historically, yeah, yeah, yeah. Historically has been. But did you, at that stage, I, and I know that the international media was looking for negative stories. They were looking for anything that was bad to put this African World Cup under a cloud. Yeah. So if they had to drag... I mean, there were crazy stories in the UK media. <laughs> I don't even want to repeat them. Mm. But if, if they could find something on the field that they could drag, especially something racial, given the divisions of the past then, you know, fair enough. But unfairly, it would be you. Yeah. As as this lanky figure that, I mean, you can't ignore Matthew Booth on a field. But did you find that with time, that kind of faded as the warm-up from the Confed to the World Cup and people got an idea of what was going on? Yeah, it did fade. Uh, I, I, I took advantage um, of the press uh, interest and I made sure that I put it right yeah. as well. I explained, explained as best as I could uh, the very intricate um, details of our footballing history. You know, just, just thinking about the different federations uh, during apartheid can yeah. drive you absolutely nuts, you know. Um, but um, yeah, you, you tried your best. And, and ultimately, uh, it was important for me to uh, represent uh, South Africa and the footballing industry in a positive light. Was that the highlight for you? Um, I think uh, the highlights of that period, yeah. Yeah, just highlights. Um, I mean, knowing that we we hosting this big oh, event yeah. and no, you know. I mean, Rob, um, you know, to be part of, to have been part of the Olympics, to have been part yeah. of the World Cup squad, to have tested my ability against uh, Spain and Brazil in the Confederations Cup, uh, who were number one and number two in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, very few athletes, not only footballers, just athletes in general, get the opportunity to do that. And um, we had the opportunity to show off as well here in South Africa, right on our doorstep, you know. Uh, and it was a fantastic uh, event. Pity that we couldn't progress. 
but um, one of those things, and and without a doubt, uh, the highlight for me. Mm. Yeah. But do do you find it strange though? Do you feel, also when I looked at the number of caps that you've had yeah. and your exposure to international football, something didn't match mm. somewhere. And when I looked at your stats and where you were playing in Russia, you know, one of the most competitive leagues in the world, you know, a league that ably plays in Europa League or plays UEFA Champions League, depending, whatever team you're playing for. But I just found it very strange that here's Matthew Booth playing his best football, playing his most regular football in Russia. But the call-ups are not happening. Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I follow a guy um, on Twitter who uh, really knows the, the youngsters around um, uh, Europe and Is across the world. Prince, exactly. Yeah, he was yeah. here last night. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, we really need somebody like that in our uh, hierarchy to keep track of these youngsters. Yeah. Uh, they're falling, uh, you know, under the radar. If you look at the, I think it's the Dutch under-16 team, their captain, South African yeah. born. One of their star players, South African born. And we can't afford to lose these youngsters, you know. We've got to keep a track of them. Um so that's just one of the the processes of uh development um that we haven't really gotten right. And when I started playing for Bafana, my first game was probably a, a B grade game, Kasafa Cup, thanks to Trot Molotto who gave me the call up. Yeah. I'd had to have two very good seasons at Cape Town Spurs before I even got a look in there. And that was just for what I would term our B team. Um, there was no ways I was going to get into that uh, senior team. You know, that's how competitive it was. Um, and so I think we've lost um, not only the ability to maximize our talent, but also to show them a clear... Uh, ladder to success it's become too vague um, and I think we've centralized our football mm -hmm. everything happens up here in Joburg that's got to change um, we've got to keep track our scouting uh, has got to uh, get better um, our resource management has got to be better the checks and balances mm -hmm. as to where the, the money actually goes um, and uh, we've got to have centers of, of excellence, you know, spread across the country. Like we can talk for ages about yeah, what the issues yeah. are, uh, but those are just some of the basic tenets that we've got to get uh, uh, all right. Yeah, I, I guess that's the future. That's about potential leadership. It's about what you as Matthew Booth, you as Lucas Kadebe, you as Doc Kumalo, and anybody else that aspires into a leadership role in football in the future, that would be that discussion. But in celebrating you, in celebrating your achievements, in celebrating your decision to go this football route mm. and to really anchor your every being around being the best, being the professional, being the international that you became, mm. what was it and what was the support like from a family perspective in pursuing this? Uh, probably, I, I I hated losing. Yeah. Uh, from a very small, my sisters will tell you, <laughs> even if you played tiddly winks or chess or something small, like that. Oh, yeah. If I lost, I went to bed crying. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> now that's that might sound uh, a bit strange, you know, but that was yeah. when I was a youngster, you know, four or five years old, and um, that that but that kind of always stuck with me, mm. uh, and I was very competitive at uh, training when we had to warm up and we no usually did the laps i wanted to be in front i never wanted to give the ball away i always wanted my team to win you know and i think that competitive edge we see we we kind of lack the players that we produce uh, that that's lacking i don't see an and i don't see an enough um players come off the pitch wow. distraught so they could lose a game and still be yeah. smiling and wanting to talk about where they're going to meet after the game exactly yeah that's not good enough I and mean, when we saw i mean uh, you've got to love roy Keane, but we saw the other day you know when when liverpool hit them for seven you know he was talking about half time and the way that he the body language of the united players coming out just something as small as you know being windled down i think they were at that stage yeah. and laughing and joking with the opposition you know, back in his day, that would never happen. Yes. You know? But that's <laughs> you know? a different thing. Roy Keane would kick <laughs> yeah, someone right. who's his own teammate. Yeah, but yeah. that's that's the kind of um, attitude that we have to ingrain in our own players. 
you know. But did um, you ever doubt? Did you ever doubt that your journey would succeed in this way? Um, no, never. Um, when you when you begin a journey, you can never really, in a sporting perspective, you can never never really plot and yeah. plan. Um, you you get taught lessons early on, as I did. Uh, if you don't learn from them, then your progress will be stunted. I felt that I learned from them. Um, the the one story I tell is uh, when I played against uh, George Durnley, he was at Seven Stars, yeah. I was at Cape Town Spurs. I was a youngster my first season and playing at Athlone Stadium and he charged at me and I was shaping to hit it down the line and I did a beautiful little cry turn in. Yeah. And I knew as soon as I said it, I knew I had made a mistake because I, I went, Ole. And and that was the foot you, you you're tempting the football gods now yeah. you know, to bring you back down to earth. And I knew it was a mistake immediately. And lo and behold, George waited for me and the ball came in my direction once again. I tried to trap it with my studs. It skidded under my, my boots. He read the possible mistake. He went on a one and one and almost scored. As he ran back to me, he ruffled my your hair? My <laughs> believe it or your not, mop? I did have hair, yeah, my yeah. mop. Yeah. And he said, All right, son. You know, and he just had a bit of a laugh, you know. And so those were the little lessons that you that you learn um, not to tempt the, the footballing gods because yeah. they have a way of bringing you back down to earth very, well, very especially quickly. Especially if you do it in front of a George Dunley. <laughs> I think he, he has that edge. That's why he calls himself the shark. He's, he's crazy. But it's, it's a beautiful story. And I want you to be a part of it when you come back from the break. Matthew Booth is our guest here tonight. You're listening to 947 for my FM, Rise FM, so it's in live. Any questions, send your WhatsApp voice notes. Be interactive, be live, go on YouTube. Marawa Sports Worldwide Live. In three, two, one. On 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. Hashtag MSW. You can be fit, you can be cool, you can be sick of this year. You can be carefree, you can be careful, you can be anything you like. Just gotta be ready, gotta be steady, gotta get you prepared. Why don't you switch now, why don't you switch now, why don't you be with Best Med? Be anything, just be with Best Med Medical Scheme. Switch to us today at bestmed.co.za. Best Med Medical Scheme is an authorized FSP. Just go look back there, okay? Wouldn't it be great to have eyes in the back of your head? With the Mazda SUV range you kind of have. With a 360-degree monitor, there's no such thing as a blind spot. Well, apart from the back seats. It's just one of the many superior features Mazda include at no extra cost. The CX-3, CX-30 and CX-5 from Mazda. Starting from only 390,500 Rand. Book a test drive at your nearest Mazda dealer. Mazda. Made with soul. T's and C's apply. There's a world where stunning design meets impressive features at Vodacom World. Get the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11 on a 1 gig red core data plan for just 249 Rand per month over 36 months and snap every moment with a crisp 50 megapixel camera. Plus, watch all your favorite vlogs, series or movies on a sleek and immersive AMOLED display. There's a world for you at Vodacom World, the home of digital innovation. T's and C's apply. Further together, Vodacom. This March at Leroy Merlin, we're giving you much more for much less. That's massive discounts across our entire DIY and decor range to help you style your home perfectly. Kitchen, garden, bathroom, bedroom, even your walls and floors. Whatever you want, you'll get much more to renovate and decorate your home for much less. Visit a Leroy Merlin branch or shop online at leroymerlin.co.za. Offer valid until 28 March. Leroy Merlin, make your home the best place to live. T's and C's apply. Make your Easter exceptional at Pick and Pay. Get 700 gram PNP cheddar, gouda, or white cheddar for only 84 and 99 each when you swipe. And one kilogram PNP low fat or fat free yogurt for only 26 rand 99 each. Exceptional Easter savings only at Pick and Pay. Valid 13 to 19 March while stocks last. T's and C's apply. You don't need a cape to help a mother survive childbirth. You don't need superpowers to save a life in an accident. You don't need a magic wand to assist a child survive cancer. All you need is 30 minutes every 56 days to save three lives. The South African National Blood Service honors the heroic blood donors who give the gift of life to those who need it the most. 
Your blood saves lives. Is this? This is nine, nine, four, four, seven. Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. I'm going to head down to KZN. Pro Pilani Media's uh, Pilani Zella is on the line. Squad is out. What's your assessment? This is, um, this is the best that uh, the coach could do. Uh, it would be an unfair criticism of me if I were to dig deeper and try to criticize the squad. I think that he, he has done his best. And, uh, and Kobamelo Kodisang was one of our brightest players. And it's so unfortunate that a player that has scored uh, 10 goals um, uh, in the league that he's playing in is not even considered for the national team. And uh, this, this is what I'm talking about when I say the coach has been in consistent in his authority. Uh, you know, at times we need to question the coach, but at times we need to support him. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Evening, Robbie. To me from Vetborgi. Thank you for the show. You have uh, the great uh, Matthew Booth. Umlungu Omnyam. The one who adored Mamelodi Sundowns very much. The former Bafana Bafana Kipti. Star Sabafana Bafana. The Great Wall uh, of Jericho. Hola, hola, Booth. And Rob and the legend Matthew Booth, I just want to thank you for your contribution in our football. Uh, you led with distinction and patriotism, and you made us believe that we are a country that is capable of punching above our, our weight with that exceptional performance of Ahmad Brukluk against uh, Brazil in the Olympics. And my question to you with the dominance of Mamelodi Sundowns players in Bafana Bafana, is it justifiable considering that uh, Vincent Del Bosque leading to 2010 World Cup selected the bulk of uh, Barcelona players uh, that were dominant? in that Champions League to strengthen the Spanish team. Do you think it is justifiable for us to also go that route? I just want to hear your thoughts. Bro, 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 I'm so excited. Yeah, can you lay in Tembisa? Would you to play for my team, uh, Sundowns? Uh, yeah, I like him. Eh? Uh, he to me looks easy. Uh, Rob, Please, uh, please uh, ask uh, Booth if is he by any chance involved in soccer, uh, whether uh, on the field of play or in the offices as an administrator or, or a scout for that matter. Uh, thank you, Rob. Good evening, Samara. It's MPOX here from Tembisa. Uh, what a fine gentleman you're hosting there by the studio in uh, Matthew Booth. I once met him by the Mall of Africa. So I just want to ask uh, Mr. Matthew Booth, uh, what can we do to have players who look like him in uh, our local football or in our Premier Soccer League? Uh, because I understand we we have so much people who talk and sound like me, uh, but I think we need to strike a balance. And what can be done to ensure that we, we encourage it from sports football, especially for people who look like him? So I just, I just don't want to use color and all, the, and all of those things. So please uh, pardon my analogy. I hope it makes sense. Thank you. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Your analogy got you tongue-tied there, Simbiwa X. <laughs> but I fully <laughs> understand what you're talking about. You know what? There were days. Let's put it out there. There were days when there was Brian Goldrick in charge of Orlando Pirates as a coach. Mm. You had Stuart Lilly, you had Mike Lambert, you had Jimmy Jubay, you had so many players. I can go down the list. You mentioned George Dernally. Yeah. In this country, it mattered little. Yeah. You had Wits University, you had Highlands Park, you had everybody, Lusitano. There was, there, there was football across the board and we were at our best. But a lot of the people fear that slowly but surely, if a kid's born... They show signs of being a great footballer. Mm. They get shipped almost immediately, post-birth or whatever, to the UK, Europe, somewhere else. Are we going to lose that touch where we have what even a 96 team represented as far as demographics in South Africa? Yeah, there was an interesting conversation. I think Pizzo started it um, with regards, you know, I think he mentioned, where are all the white boys? You know? Yes. <laughs> that yeah. was the headline. Um and I remember journalists phoning me about it, and my immediate response was, and and I've had the the good fortune to be able to travel quite extensively, yeah. so I'm, I haven't been cocooned, you know, in my environment. I've interacted with a lot of different LSMs, yeah, 
uh, and I and I, I I think that it's a class issue. It's not a color issue. Mm-hmm. And working with uh, amateur clubs now since I've retired, um, working with my uh, MPO as well uh, in a variety of d- different environments. That's that's the conclusion that I've come to. And so. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm going to have to use color here to describe this sure. uh, this reasoning. But we're actually losing a lot of black and colored kids as well. Yes, we are. It's just not the optics. We're not we're not seeing that. <laughs> but why though, Matthew? Because I, I have a big problem mm-hmm. in that it gets allowed to happen. So yeah. people that feel that they've got a little bit more money, they're affluent. They can yeah. send their kids to private school, yeah. but those very same private schools don't allow football to be played. But you can play any other sport except for mm. football. But they'll buy their kids all of these games, these yeah. FIFA games to play. The kids will know everyone in transfer from Man City to Burnley to West Bromwich Albion to whatever. They will know that, but they won't even know one with fun to play. Yeah, no, you're right. Um, and so that's the responsibility of our footballing authorities to get our, our act together uh, because we're losing kids yeah. across the board doesn't matter what color because they're colored and black kids who are uh, middle class and upper class yeah. you know they're, they're colored and black kids who have never been to a township before I mean that uh, our growing middle class is it's it's obvious yeah um, so when you go to private school or, or model C school ex model C school uh, you'll get uh, many many options rugby cricket athletics you know and if you don't like any of those you've got PlayStation at home Eventually, you get a girlfriend. Eventually, uh, you might you might get into alcohol, drugs. You know, there's a variety of different options, options. outside. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so if you try football and the referee doesn't turn up, if you try football and the lines are not marked, if you try football and you're having to play on a on a garbage on a cabbage patch, you know, uh, if your cards not takes too long to 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 come, if you the registration process is uh, always stitching up. Then you're going to eventually tell your mom and dad, <laughs> "I'm not interested. You know, I want to go try something else." So, a kid from a township environment, I feel, doesn't have as many options. So, therefore, they're more hungry. Mm. They'll stick it out. They're resilient. They're hardened. And like Elton Mering once told me who came from Hanover Park, yeah. uh, he had two options as a kid, as a male in his environment. Either you become a footballer or a gangster. That's it. That's absolutely. You know. I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's, it's so surprised that, again, we, we bring in race because it's been the hallmark of what South Africa is. Sean Bartlett does well, goes to Charlton. You know, Benny McCarthy does well. He goes, Ajax, he goes to... UK, he wins Champions League. Still the only one who has won UEFA Champions League medal. Also from those tough environments. Mark Williams, our 96 hero, off the bench, gives us glory. Had a little stint. Andre Aronsa, you know, Fulham. He, you know, had a stint over there. So there is that trail of saying, I mean, even even look at it now with the Lyle Foster and where he is, we play against Man City of the weekend. It makes sense. Because of those options, it's either you stick it out with football, mm-hmm. or you carry that gun and risk losing your life. Yeah. But why do we allow these schools to make these decisions on behalf of kids that could be as equally good, who could be going to a virtual Craven Week type, but for football? Yeah, uh, I think it's because they're independent, and you can only bring uh, so much pressure to bear. But I think not enough pressure is being brought to bear. Can and we? It can, it can be soft pressure. Yeah. Uh, parents are playing a big influence in demanding that football is played. Often what will happen is that a school, a private, a private school will then offer football for one term. So the kids will only play uh, four or five games the season's over uh, to make sure that they do play in the rugby term, yeah. for example. Um, perhaps the, they won't invest uh, as many uh, resources in in the coaches i've seen i've been to private schools where the groundsman or the driver is the football coach unacceptable you know they uh, they don't have kit they don't have they're not treated at the same at assembly just to take a box though the rugby 15 will be brought up and you know yeah. loaded and uh, 
you know, they'll have a to completely different status to the to the football team. So there's many different ele elements that we've got to get right. Um, but on my travels, um, I feel that facilities mm -hmm. um, and being able to level the playing fields and the management capacity of those fields um, is what we've got to get right. And it can't just be found in our metros. It's got to be spread uh, nationwide. We've got to be giving, given, we've got to be giving young boys and girls uh, opportunities to shine, and that is not happening, Rob. So we not we not maximizing our pool of talent. Yeah. And believe you me, we have got it in abundance. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you look at the the upsurge of the women's game. Where was the women's game a couple of years ago? It was seen as just a little darling thing on the yeah. side and yet they are dominant they're african champions their coaches three times best coach on the continent they got players planted all over the world yeah. in the highest leagues playing and dominating and they're in the world cup even without a professional setup so that says a lot all right reflect to a couple of the voice notes to me hey praising his umlung omnyam uh, demoko <laughs> says thank you very much uh, for your contribution in sport all round um he talked about him at Look Look. Mm. Um, I think we all, I hear what he talks about, uh, Vincent Del Bosque and Sundowns and the dominance of Sundowns and the national team. But in, in taking you back, you know, for matter of fact of this show, in celebrating your life, giving you your flowers, was that game that we all sat up and we watched. I remember yeah. that game against Brazil. I think your coach, Shakes, couldn't be on, on, on the, on, in the dugout. So Styles Pumo um, had to come through. And then there was just a moment where South Africa, South Africa dominated Brazil in a manner that Brazilian game, which we all revere worldwide, we took over and we almost became the Brazil that day. I don't know where that ranks in terms of your career, being there with the likes of Abram Deo, you Patrick, Mbutos, Kukame, you name it. Yeah. Those guys were there, David Kahneman. Where does that rate? Oh, no, that was probably one of the best games, not only from a result point of view, but for me personally, it was probably one of my best performances ever. Yeah. Uh, and that, bear in mind, that was a, a, a very long journey of six years, Rob. You yeah. know, and that was almost the climax um, and that's never been replicated before, that faith in, okay, Sheikh Mashaba, you take this group of players, Sassel's going to run with it, you've got worldwide sports to, to, to do your logistics, yeah. we're going to leave you alone, get on with it. And we, you know, it first started with the, um, you know, the under-20 um, African Nations Cup in Morocco, we came second to the host, Morocco, losing 1-0 in the final in 1997. We then went to uh, the World Youth uh, Champs in Malaysia, yeah. World Cup under 20. Uh, we played against France, Brazil, and South Korea. And I always seem to kind of had a de decent game against Brazil. I've played in three times. Yeah. Um, and that's certainly, you know, uh, that journey to, to Sydney uh, and that game uh, will always uh, remain a favorite. People still, unfortunately, you know, Guys like Mark Williams will always complain about being reminded about 96, 96, 96. Yeah. We get reminded about Brazil, Brazil in, in, in the Olympics. And that shouldn't be the talking point still. You know, those two generations of, 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 um, of footballers shouldn't be the talking point still. You know, they should have been two or three generations after that that we should be talking to about. To give us more memories. To give, more, give us more memories. All right, here's a familiar voice. Hey, Mess, David Kenemeyer, your long lost friend. Uh, grew up together, played together from a young age. Um, just wanted to wish you a happy belated birthday um, and everything of the best for this year and for the way forward and hope you had a great birthday. Um, hopefully uh, you had an enjoyable day and may you stay blessed and all the best. Yeah, another Pisces baby, eh? Thanks, David. Happy belated. Matthew Booth, your response to David Kahneman. Yeah, I think he's probably still got Ronaldinho in his pocket. Oh, um, but yeah, he, yeah, he, had a, he had a fantastic game that day um, as well. Um, but yeah, no, thanks, David. He, myself and David uh, played youth football, I think, at under eight age, sure. age level. He he was playing for Ottery Furness with Ian Taylor. Yeah. 
and uh, we were we were fierce rivals, uh, Fishuk and, and Ottery. So I know David from way back then, and it was great to see his progress uh, making the Western Province under 16 team and then under 20, and eventually, you know, playing together in that in those Olympics was was quite uh, incredible. Do you remember this guy? Hello, my boy, Sean Roberts here. Just a quick shout out to to you, my friend. Um, a massive thank you for all that you have done for South African football and continue to do so. Very, very privileged to have shared the field with you and uh, honored to call you one of my closest mates. You deserve all the success that's coming your way and uh, keep being you, buddy. Much love. Sean Roberts. Yeah. Hey. Um, Absolute nutter in the changing room, but he he's, he was a goalkeeper, so say say no more. <laughs> it it but, goes uh, with the territory, doesn't it? Great, <laughs> no, great character. Um, yeah, I think it wasn't for his uh, knee; he would have had a much longer uh, career. But enjoyed my time with him at uh, Ajax Cape Town for yeah. for two seasons. You love so. music as well, don't you? Um, yeah, I do. What kind of music do you <laughs> listen? To? I'm just that's a Friday. Hey, nothing wrong with music. Ah, I see. Uh, a couple of guys asked me today about music. Now I get it. All right. No. no Afro. <laughs> Which one? Afro House, yeah. That's my... I've, I've got a wide uh, range in taste. I mean, I listen to uh, heavy metal, uh, pop, you know, Afro oh. House. Uh, Sounds you, heavy, you though. It. Uh, yeah, exactly. This is, this is it. Where does this take you? Prepare yourself. Where does this take you? <laughs> so... Um, when I was in, in Russia, I actually started to listen to uh, Lincoln Park um, as preparation for the games. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, uh, post-game, it would be, you know, Bob Marley or something chilled. Um, so that was just a, a, a prep of mine. Yeah. Like a hype me up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, hype up because <laughs> after the break, we have more. Matthew Booth. Us. I told you it's going to be hectic. Rocker stuff. Matthew Booth. Hashtag MSW. Live now on 947 Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Soweto Live. At the same time. Hashtag MSW. As a driver, 28 Rand can only get you so far in a day. Okay, maybe it buys you a little more than a litre of petrol, but will it get your car towed when you need it? Or pay for new wipers or other repairs? Yes! With MyWay, you can get cover from 28 Rand per day, and that includes 24-7 roadside assistance, emergency alert, and so much more. From as little as 28 Rand per day, you can let your drive continue. For a quote, visit myway.co.za now and save. MyWay is a licensed non-life insurer and FSP. Premiums are risk profile dependent and T's and C's apply. What's home without the sound of laughter? Without the smell of something homemade? Without life's first steps? What's home if not the place we dream? The place we gather to find comfort, to love, where we've left a bit of ourselves on every surface. Home is where we celebrate the beauty of life. Celebrate it. The Galaxy S23 Ultra's 200 megapixel camera brings you what can only be described as wow-worthy resolution. So much resolution, in fact, that you'll be able to zoom, crop, scale, and print your images without losing any detail. Now that's epic. Buy the epic Galaxy S23 now and add the Galaxy Watch 5 from only 19 Rand per month. Available for a limited time only. Galaxy S23 series. Share the epic. T's and C's apply. Things are racing ahead. Your account's in the red. The kids need new shoes. And account payments are due.
you. Hi, Shane. South Africa. You need a reason to smile. So get smiling with these deals from Spa. Rhodes baked beans and tomato sauce, 410 grams. Reward customers pay $10.99 each. And Huggies Gold Value Pack or New Baby, $194.99 per pack. Valid until 19 March. While stocks last, T's and C's apply. Spa, where for smiles. We are in. Get these TV to witness an epic season of Big Brother. The Titans starts January 15th on DSTV Channel 198. Rated 18 for mature audiences and proudly sponsored by Lotto Star, Flutterwave and Bamboo. We've all heard of injury time, added time and extra time, but poor Chris has hit extra, extra time. While his girlfriend tries on everything in the store, he's been stuck outside the change rooms. But look, he's checking Betway Bulb. With Betway Bulb, he's got access to the stats he'll need to place his bet on tonight's game, all right on his phone. There's no better way to burn down the clock. Another feature, another gem. Hala, la. It helps to be switched on with Betway Bulb. Licensed and regulated by the Western Cape Gambling and Racing Board. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. For gambling counseling, call SARGF on 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp 076 675 Previously on Marawa Sports Worldwide. We have a FIFA president and a post. He is promising record revenues in the next four-year cycle. 11 billion US dollars. Gianni Infantino. And the second time I came, I was uh, told, we all love you, but actually we're not going to support you in the election. And I said, who I am to give up? I'm now calling on the Congress to give a round of applause to elect Gianni Infantino as a FIFA president for the period from 2023 to 2027. All those who um, who love me, then I know there are so many, and those who hate me, I know there are few. I love you all, of course, today especially. <laughs> Look at me now. Look at me now. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Friday nights, always. This is how we do it. About our beloved legends. Pull up your chair. Let's chat legendary stuff. Marawa Sports Worldwide. Robert Marawa, Matripoldi, the legend himself. We are with the legend. Uh, Robbie, let me start like this. Boom. I missed that sound. The guy was uh, marvelous to watch. I still remember him when he was still at uh, under 23. Uh, Ruby, uh, we had a good defender there in Matthew Wood. Tall, strong at the back. You couldn't intimidate him. He will stand on his ground or on his feet, Marawa. Wood will forever be my legend. I'm go. Hey, Rob. Uh, Italy had Alessandro Nesta and Paolo Maldini. Holland had Yapstamp. England will then have a John Terry later on. Um, France had France, um, Frank Lebeuf. And we had our own gentle giant from Fishhook. One question for me to, to Matthew. Who did he look up to um, You know, as, as a defender at a time when he decided to play football? Otherwise, um, he was the best, 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 best defender we had at the time. Thank you, Rob. Good evening, uh, Mr. Marawa. Uh, Mr. Marawa, thanks very much for having who made the boot a studio, our legend. Uh, Mr. Marawa, just a quick one for Umetu. Does he think that uh, the other generation for USA under 23 that beat uh, e Brazil, which consists of uh, Bo Emil Baron, Kipichini Machombo, Umetu put himself, uh, and Abo Patrick Mbutu, Abo Stika, Siabo Nganom Vete, Abo Beni, is the best that we ever had uh, in South Africa. Thank you, Mr. Marawa. I wish Umetu all the best in future. Yeah, reaching danger hour. Our legend tonight, Matthew Booth. You're listening to 947. Rise FM, Sowetan Live, and Vuma FM. Welcome to the show. If you're just joining us, you've missed a mountain. Maybe more than that. Matthew Booth. By the name and the ID. Clarify this morning. But home affairs, it's still poor. <laughs> Very biblical by nature. Okay, I'm not sure if he's going to log us off with a prayer at the end of the show. Maybe he does. You know what? Quickly. 
with all these voice notes, who did you look up to? I think there was a beautiful Mkumbi Kumalo narration of some of the greats around the world, but he just said, who did you look up yeah. to? I think uh, I didn't have to look too far to that 96 squad. Uh, Mark Fish, Neil Toby, Lucas Kharebe from a, from a defensive point of view. Yeah. And I tried my best to try and take uh, little characteristics from each of those. You know, Mark was fearless going forward. You know, um, he was a fantastic character. Neil, great reader of the game. You know, Lucas fearless, you know, great, great leader yeah. as well in his own way. Um, so you try, and, you try and cherry pick, you know, from the end. Just cross your fingers and hope hope that it works out. Um, at Cape Town Spurs, I had Ronnie Zondi, who was a very um, eloquent, e- elegant, sorry, um, player yeah. on the ball. A good pass of the ball at a very uh, typical, quite rough Cape yeah. Town Spurs yeah. uh, setup, you know. And then, of course, getting to Sundowns, the late great uh, Joe Smachalejo, he was uh, outstanding. Uh, Musia Jao, uh, Mike Manzini, you know, the list this goes on. So, when you rub shoulders with those types of characters. Um, you hope that something rubs off, yeah. you know. But you've got to be, uh, you've got to realize um, the chance that you've been given. Uh, Probably not then, but now you do. Now you do. Yeah, yeah especially that screamer that uh, Musia Jao scored. My <laughs> goodness, probably still one of the best goals I have ever seen live at a football game. I've made you talk too much. I think I need to make people that know you better talk more than we both can. Good afternoon, Mr. Marawa. It's uh, Stanton Fredericks here. Um, just uh, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for once again just providing this platform um, where we pay tribute uh, to footballers that have contributed to the football in South Africa. Um, you have a gentleman in front of you. Um, our story go, goes back w- many, many years. I've shared the field with uh, Matthew Booth from under-20 national team, where we played the qualifiers for the African Nations Cup. We went on to play the first under-20 World Cup in Malaysia. Um, I think this is the first World Cup that South Africa has participated in, and Matthew Booth uh, was the captain. We then moved on to the Olympics um, in Sydney 2000, where Matthew Booth was the captain and the leader throughout the preparations as well as the tournament. Um, I went on to share the field with him at the national team at the highest level. So... Um, in terms of football, uh, this is a brother, this is a colleague, this is a teammate uh, that has led me, that has contributed to my development. Um, and I just want to say thank you, Matthew Booth, for your leadership, uh, for your guidance, for your, for your friendship. Um, I think uh, without a doubt, uh, you were born a leader and um, you've led me not only on the field, but off the field. Um, if ever somebody leads by example, it is you, my friend. Um, And uh, firstly, I just want to thank you for opening uh, the doors of Europe to myself and many others. Yourself and Jacob Lecheto went first. Uh, You excelled in the performance on the field and you allowed them to trust us. And uh, when we moved to Europe, we were able to earn an income. We were able to change the lives of our families. So for you, my friend, we were forever indebted. But more importantly, I just want to say... Uh, Matthew, you're more than a colleague, you're more than a captain, um, you're more than a friend, you're a brother to me. Um, our, our bond um, goes very, very deep. Uh, our kids, our two sons play together, they will embark on another journey, which is to the US, uh, where they will uh, grow even closer. So that just bonds us closer together. And um, at the end of the day, I just want to say, as a player, you've played at the highest level. You've led at the highest level. It is not easy for any player to be a captain and a leader. So my friend, in terms of being a leader, you have broken boundaries for many years. Uh, I take it off the field. Uh, Your interrelationship, your interracial relationship has been an example for South Africans and showed that we are just people. There is no color. Um, So my friend, uh, uh, I just want to say once again from South African football fraternity, from everybody that's listening, I'm sure they're called, uh, your switchboard is off the hook, uh, uh, Rob. So I just want to say, Matthew Booth, thanks for being a friend, a colleague, a leader, and a uh, a mentor, an example to many. And uh, my friend, onwards and upwards. Thank you. Wow, Stanton Fredericks. I mean, that was a a tearjerker for me. Imagine what that means to you. (laughs) How do you respond to that? Yeah, look, um, you know, us as as male footballers, we we come from a very macho, uh, testosterone-filled environment, you know. So often things go unsaid. Uh, We're quite mercenary in our outlook 
in life, you know, chopping and changing from club to club. Um, so it's very rare that um, somebody of, of Stanton's nature will will actually say it out loud. Mm. Um, so that was yeah, it was very gratifying. And um, but thanks for the leadership, though, because he highlights, you know, Malaysia, the World Cup, yeah. our first experience of any World Cup, but also the continuation to the Olympic Games, things that we can't talk about so freely. I know you wanted to say more. I got to respect the elders, you know, people that are <laughs> ten thousand times older than you and I. Also wanted to say something. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Marawa Robert. Good evening, Bev. After a long time, hey, hope things are good there. Yeah, man, you're having a big man in the studio there. Not big in terms of stature, but in terms of achievements, as well as conduct of himself. Matthew Booth, as we all know, was a captain of the under-20, under-23s. I mean, uh, his leadership skills are of this world. You have never seen you, Matthew, angry or doing anything. Discipline was the order of day from Matthew Booth. All his teammates would always follow what he says, do what he says. Uh, Matthew, hope you're good in the studio there, my brother. How are you and the family in front of our goals? And I called you, hey, Matthews, dribbling is not your thing. You're not good in dribbling. Get the ball half it away from the danger zone. That's all, and push up. And everybody loved and that didn't affect you. But I would say today, one other thing, you guys have shown so much, so much respect in me and the technical committee of the team. If I were to really have it my power, I would sing the song that says, turn back the hands of time, so that we can go back to Sydney, go and cause surprises, cause havocs and all that in terms of football. But I would say to you, Matthews, one can see from your family what kind of a person are you. And uh, I would still like to remind you about our lunch that we had. As EP in the Mfanagiti, invite all the other guys. We need to make a come together one day. I would say to you, Matthews, thanks. Keep it up. The work that you're doing as an analyst with all the other guys, Stanton Fredericks and all these other guys, very good. Robert, the young panel you brought in this uh, analysis uh, field, very good. Begana Bushiks Lava, I'm a welcome Dover, eat Dover. Seba Katele, man. Get young players to do these things. Yeah, they are doing it. It sounds so nice to listen to them analyzing the games. Thank you, Robert. Cheers, Matthews. Matthews! <laughs> How are you, Matthews? Uh, Shakes Mashaba, thank you so much indeed. The one and only legendary coach and football player. All in one sentence. Give me 30 seconds response because I still have another human being waiting. Yeah, I know. Um, Shakes uh, means a lot to me. He was a large part of uh, my development, uh, not only as a, as a footballer but as a as a man. Yeah. Uh, and he was uh, always very outspoken, which is what a lot of that generation uh, picked up from him, and has put us in good stead. Because, as you know, these days uh, outspokenness is looked down upon, it's trodden upon, Taboo. and it's not encouraged. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Elare uh, Tabut, my teammate that became uh, my brother. Uh, you know, I just wanted to say thank you for your for your friendship, bra, your brotherhood, and you know, uh, I met you when I came for for a training camp with under 23s. I think it was in 1998. You were the captain coming from the under 20 World Cup with uh, Stig and them. But I must say thank you, boss. Uh, I played with you at, at, at Sundowns, but just for six months before you left for Russia. Uh, but the best time I ever had with you. And I think we're still having some good time together with the over 35s and, you know, our coaching clinics and our, our Legends games. But uh, the best, uh, obviously, for me was the All-Africa games that we had when we were staying in Alex with the under-23. Um, and also the best ever game I I played with you as my all-time partner, my best partner, uh, my partner in crime that understand me when we play uh, four and five. You know, the olden days, modern days game where you were the umbrella, you know, the sweeper. 
in the team uh, was when we beat Brazil and then we made sure that uh, Ronaldinho wasn't going to score and he never scored in that game. Unfortunately, we considered one goal and unfortunately we couldn't go through out of the group stages. But uh, yeah, for me, as uh, uh, my friend, my former teammate, my former captain, I can call you my brother. Thank you for, for, for your support. Thank you for your friendship, your brotherhood, and uh, we're growing older. One of these days we'll all be <laughs> celebrating our big 50s. But uh, thank you for everything, boss. Hope to see you next week on the golf course again. Cheers, Tabut. Fabian McCarthy told me he lost one centimeter around his waist from playing golf. <laughs> oh. I mean, the tributes keep pouring in. That's why we say... We, we celebrate your, your your life while you're still alive and uh, we do it openly with the people that really helped you to pretty much calm down hey have, have you calmed down oh yeah no definitely yeah this is this is this is it this, this is yeah. where does this take you ah uh, no this is just uh the type of music that that i enjoy chilling out to yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh i think music plays a big role in 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 most athletes uh so and and wasn't any different for me but why this particular song ah, i just i just enjoy the beat was it the hook what what what, what got you hooked <laughs> to this? hey no like i said i've got a wide wide range in 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 taste and other things from that's a that's a that's a big <laughs> jump though from what you what i played earlier on i mean this is like something <laughs> no, i would bob to you right now <laughs> i hey. don't know who told you about rammstein <laughs> no don't worry about uh, it don't worry because we, we learned more about you than we could ever have <laughs> All we were saying, Matthew Booth, is that we celebrate you. We celebrate your life, your journey, in your birthday month, 14th of March. Chap from Fishhook, who gave the world and all of us the excitement of knowing you. And all we do is we just say, hear the flowers, enjoy, smell them, and know that we respect you and what you've contributed to the country. I appreciate that uh, coming from you, Rob, and uh, yeah, keep up the good work for, you know, keeping uh, ex-players in the public eye, it's very important yeah. to us. Uh, I think everybody knows the trials and tribulations that we go through. Uh, so it's fantastic that you're providing a platform for, for us. And um, we'll certainly keep on attempting to do that as well. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you and I got some cheesecake to go eat. Um, <laughs> let's leave this platform. Have a great weekend. We spoke about censorship, didn't we? Yeah. The bakery <laughs> is always open. Let's do it